to the show. This is Random Access. I'm your host, Bobby Chastain. Today, our guest is Megan Jackson. Megan is a potter, and she teaches at Higher Fire Studio. Mm -hmm. Megan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, how did you get into pottery, clay work? Um, let's see, in my undergrad, I was walking by the Student Union Building, uh, University of New Mexico, and looked in and said, how does this work? And so for uh, nine plus years now, I've been doing clay and then porcelain, very specific, very thin pottery, and just loved it. It's and obviously, you're, you're teaching it now, so you have an aptitude for it. When did you discover that it was something you were good at doing? Um, a couple months in, I guess. Um, I just, you know, it, well, like anything, you practice. Um, and if you practice enough, you get better at it. Um, so I practiced a lot and got really good at it. I think it does seem like something that's intimidating to beginners. You know, we see the people using the wheel, and it seems like a house of cards that can kind of just plop any time. So... And it does. <laughs> it does a lot. It, I've, I call it my mud pies. <laughs> I made a lot of mud pies in the beginning. So. And now, fun. obviously, you have these wonderful pieces. Walk us through, before we get to showing those, maybe walk us through the process a little bit. OK. Um, pulled some clay here. So as you can see, you can manipulate it. You can play with it, uh, shape it. And, and as it dries, it hardens. And you can't. you can't do as much with it. So but when it's, it's in this still, state and you mess up, you can kind of just throw it back into the pile and it's still Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Yeah, we call that the reclaim and all of the clay gets mixed back together and you can make something new, which is fun. And then next, um, whoops. Next we have uh, some which call it? Um, greenware. Greenware. And So this is already it's gone on the wheel and it's dried. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Has anything else happened to it at this point? Yeah, I accidentally knocked against it and kind of broke it, so I brought oh. it in as an example. And so if you can see. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. Yeah. So, so at, this <laughs> point, at this point, it's very easy to break. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you have to be very careful. But it's at this point is when you want to do some of the carving. So if you do any delicate, fine work, this is the point where you start pulling away some of the extra clay. And if you mess up now, that's sort of, you're, you're, you're me you forget it because. It's, yeah, there's no, there's no attaching it. Right. So you can I turn this into to. a shiv, that's about it, huh? I wouldn't, okay. but all right. <laughs> and then, so from there, wh when does it get to the state that you can actually, you know, ha handle it and it's not gonna break apart in your hand? Uh, so we put it in this giant oven called a kiln and heat it up to around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit and then you get something called bisqueware, which over there, that owl mug. I'll be very careful if you could just yeah. hold that. Yeah. So at this point, it is still delicate, but uh, it's a lot more, it's a lot stronger. Um, it becomes porous, which if you dunk it into a glaze or paint, um, it'll soak up all of that moisture. And there's a lot, of, if you could just hold, hold it up in front and maybe we can get a shot of it. There's, there's so much detail yeah. work goes into this. Um, and that, how do you get this embossing uh, on, on these clay works? Um, there's a bunch of things. So you can use a stamp. Um, I use my initial stamp here. Uh, let's see another. Yeah, let's look at one of the. Let's look at one of the, yeah. the final products. So this okay. is something that is pretty cool. So all of your items are functional. So nothing just decorative. Everything does something. Right. So this fish, um, you take two kind of bowls, slap them together, and then start adding things. And I just kept adding. He got a monocle, and I decided that I wanted him to be functional. So he has a, uh, a little hole for coins. I think you can hear that. And then there's and also then, the hat. There's a, a rabbit in the hat. Right, yeah. So I needed a way to, to keep the hat on. So I figured bunny ears. And then there's some bigger bowls, so is that a lot harder to make something on the wheel that's big, like like the bowl in the back here, compared to some of the smaller, like a teacup, for instance? Right. Um, it, it is. It takes some strength. It takes a lot of patience, because you really should go slow. And sometimes you start with the big, and you end up breaking it, so you make something smaller. And when you're still learning, you 
break it again and make something smaller and smaller until you get something like this. <laughs> so you end up with a lot of teacups, basically. Yes. You go for, do you go for a bowl every time and sort of just end up with shot glasses, or as long as you already start where it's very small? Uh, well, a lot of times you go for a cylinder, and then the cylinder is that basic basic shape, and then you can widen it out into this big bowl. Um, but, yeah. Um, well, yeah. the work is a lot of fun. Here, if we just have time, we'll show one more if you just speak yeah. briefly to, to this one. Okay. Um, this guy was thrown on a wheel, um, and then after he dried up a little bit, so, um, sorry, after he dried up a little bit, I pushed in his mouth and kind of manipulated the clay a little bit more and took some porcelain, so a different kind of clay, for the teeth and the eyes. And then once he was bisked, like that, that one that's still breakable, um, painted him, put him back in the, in the oven or the kiln for 2450 degrees Fahrenheit, and then he came out looking like this. Well, so you brought your throw wheel, am uh, I saying that right? Pot potter's wheel, yeah. Potter's wheel. Yeah. So you're going to give us a demonstration? I would love to, okay. absolutely. Well, so everyone stay tuned and let's take a look at that. Sounds good. So if you've never played with clay, um, I kind of think of it as learning a new instrument. First day you are not going to be playing Furlis or Brahms or something like that. But the more you practice, the better you get at it. And after a while, you can really enjoy it. So step one, which I've already started is to get the clay on the wheel and get it centered. Um, this is the hardest part. Um, if you use a lot of force, go through until it stops moving around so much. Whoops. And then I'm going to dive down with your thumb and you make more or less this shape. After that, you're going to widen it out. Here's the fun part. So you're going to make your hand like a wall. And then with the middle finger, you push down and push into your hand. I like to get up over the wheel, up over the center as much as possible so that it goes up and not out. It's harder to, if it goes out, you can't get it up. It just falls, falls over and then you have stuff going in every direction. It's great. So after that, you can kind of collar it to get it back. That looks cool, like a triangle. But after that, you're going for this. So you want to get all the clay that's down at the bottom all the way up to the top. Pull. And hopefully, if it's even, it's not going around. It's uneven like this is. <laughs> the thicker side, as it thins out, goes way off. And this is when they say to go slower. I'm always impatient, so I go too fast. On the top, get some water so you don't stick, but not too much. After a few years, clay be water becomes your enemy because you don't want it to get too soggy. If it gets too soggy, it doesn't want to be as structurally sound as it might otherwise be. Mm. Okay. 
So say we want to make a bowl. You start going up, and then you start going out. Choose your favorite tool. And I'm going to maybe use a sponge on the bottom. Not as good, but that's okay. And then say you make a mistake, it goes like that. Oh well. So, I'm going to try to take some of it off. Oops. Make something smaller. This is typically how things start off. Like you start off with lots of clay, and then you get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then suddenly you have a teacup. You can take the steps one by one, very carefully, very slowly, finding your tools wherever you left them. There they are. And the top is uneven, so I'm going to find my needle under all of this clay. learning. It's always good to cut it in half. And then you can see if you've got a good thickness. So the thickness, you want a little bit of a taper. And ideally you don't want to go through the bottom because then now this is a good flower pot. So, that's a bowl. <laughs>